Hi guys, welcome to CA Inter Financial Management MCQs. Chapter that we all have selected today is Cost of Capital. All our costing MCQs are already there on our YouTube channel. Apart from that, join our Telegram ID for the further updates on costing FM and for CA Final SCMP. So let's do whatever is there today. The cost of equity capital is all of the following except, okay, bring me the four options please. The minimum rate that a firm should earn on equity finance part of an investment, okay. B, a rate of equity finance portion of the investment that at worst leaves a market price of the stock, stock means share, equity share, leaves it unchanged, okay. C, by far the most difficult cost of component, uh, difficult component cost to estimate, okay. D, generally lower than before tax cost of debt. Think of the correct answer. Think of entire things of KE that you all have done. You should be able to crack it. Please comment below. Okay, now see. KE, you all can solve it by many ways. First of all, there is no accepted kind of like, you know, perfect theory. Because whenever you issue debentures, you are sure that you are going to be paying interest. So therefore, interest is a definite expense. Same thing for preference shares. Whenever you issue preference shares, you are going to be paying preference shares in the rate of that thing is fixed here. But for equity, there is no certainty how much you are going to be paying. So therefore, there are a lot of theories that are there. You have only the dividends approach, you have earnings approach, you have growth approach by uh, Gordon, then you have William Sharp approach that depends upon the uh, IRF, then the return of the markets and beta factor. So it is most complicated to be honest. So answer C is all correct. Okay, it is like, you know, uh, difficult to estimate. Apart from that, what does KE actually tell you? KE is the minimum return that the shareholders want. If you get that much amount of return, shareholders will be happy, they will keep the share. So therefore, B part is also correct only as such. A, it is a minimum return that you will have to be earning on the equity finance part. Obviously, because there's a minimum cost of capital. So you'll have to be giving that thing to the equity shares back. Whatever you have to give them back, that becomes cost for you. So A makes sense for me, B makes sense for me, C makes sense for me. About D, let's see this, you all will understand. KE is always highest. Sir, why KE is always highest? Simple because who has taken maximum risk? Equity shareholders. So company will have to give them maximum returns. So therefore, for company, cost of equity becomes the highest. And obviously, then comes KP. KP is always lower than KE for sure because preference shareholders have not taken that much amount of risk. No, So they will want lower returns as compared to equity shareholders. And debenture holders have not taken any risk. Worse to worse, even if company makes a loss, they will still be rewarded with their interest. No, So therefore, KD is always lower than KP. So you would have observed this thing in almost all your questions here that KE is always the highest. Cost of equity is always the highest. Okay, after that, you will have the lowest figure. The lowest figure is always cost of debt. And lastly, in middle, you're going to be having cost of preference shares. So that's it. So out of the four options, I guess D should be the correct option because it's the only wrong option. In D, what is written? Generally lower than before tax cost of debt. No, it is always higher than cost of debt for sure. Whether before tax or after tax, but then it is always higher because interest rates usually will always be lower than the dividend rates because equity shareholders have taken highest risk beta. They have to be getting highest amount of returns. So answer should be D over here. That should be the correct answer. Yeah, that's the correct one. I'll see you all next time. Bye.